Hey, Merry Christmas, kids. Hope you've had an amazing morning so far. Hope that you're rugged up, you're next to the burning fire, you're sitting near a window seeing the, the um, snow gently falling. Um, we hope you're going really well. Hey, um, seeing it's Christmas, I'm gonna read you a Christmas story. So rug up, get warm, get a cup of cocoa, um, and I'm gonna read you the How the Grinch Stole Christmas. So, hold on a second. It's not snowing out there. It's not winter. We're in Australia. We're by the beach. What am I thinking? Hold on, let me get rid of this. Let's get rid of that. See you later. All right, team, help me out here. <laughs> We're having a surfer's Christmas, guys. This is Ocean Grove. I so hope you get to the beach today. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna read you dudes the Surfer's Bible, tracks. All right, settle in. Let's read all about surfing. Come on. Hold on a sec. That's not what Christmas is about. We all know this, don't we? Let me get rid of this. I'm gonna get rid of that. Chuck this one on. Um, you kids all know what Christmas is really about. And do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that the, the creator of the universe, the one that actually made the snow, you got you kids are smart, so you already know this, but the, do you know there's no two snowflakes that are alike? They are all different. And the creator who made all of those, 
he actually came to the earth. He did. And he also was the one who made the waves that hopefully you're going to enjoy and, and ride later on today. He made those two. He's incredible. He came to the earth. And so that is what we're going to read today. All right. Let's find out how this creator of the universe came to be and live with us. Look at all the people on the road to Bethlehem. They were on their way to be counted and they were very unhappy. They were mad at the king and they frowned as they walked. They were angry with the king and they grumbled as they walked. And this is because the king thought he was so important that he wanted to count everyone so he knew how many people were in his kingdom, in his empire. And that's why they had to go and get counted. Oh, but not everyone was unhappy. Do you see the happy couple on the road? If they were mad at the king, their faces didn't show it. Do you have any idea why they were so happy? Mary soon was going to have a baby. God had told Mary and Joseph that their baby was the one promised long ago. He would rescue God's people, give God's place back to them and bless all the peoples of the earth. But in this crowded city, where would this special baby be born? In a nice big home? No, not in a nice big home. In a clean hotel? Nope, not in a clean hotel. All the nice big homes and clean hotels were filled up with people. Can you guess where this special baby would be born? God's forever king was born in a stable, a place for animals. His parents named him Jesus. They wrapped him up warmly and laid him in a manger. What a strange place for the promised one. Who would have imagined it? While Caesar, the king of the Roman world, was showing everyone how great he was by counting all of his people, God, the king of the universe, was showing the world how great he was by sending his son into the world as one of his people. What a very big day. What God had promised to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and David had arrived in the birth of, yeah, you guessed it, Jesus. And the news of his great arrival was about to spread. Look at all those sheep. Do you see the men watching over the sheep? They are shepherds. On the night that Jesus was born, out on the rolling hills of Bethlehem, some shepherds were enjoying the cool air. It was dark, it was quiet. And then, all of a sudden, God surprised the shepherds. A bright light shone in the night sky. An angel made a big announcement to the shepherds. I bring you good news for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a saviour who is Christ the Lord. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. The shepherds were so amazed. And then there was another surprise. More and more and more angels came until the night sky was filled with wonder and brightness. Together they sang glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those who, with whom he is pleased. At this the shepherds ran to Bethlehem as fast as they could. They wanted to see the long awaited promise of God lying in a manger. And when they got there, they saw the baby Jesus. They smiled. They knew everything the angels had told them was true. Jesus, God's forever King, had been born. And so, hey kids, I hope that maybe you'll get to the beach today and maybe you'll even watch movies about snow falling at Christmas. But I want you to know something. I want you to know it, know it, know it. That the King, the, the Creator who made those snowflakes who made the waves and the amazing beaches that we have. He came into the world and he came into the world because he loves you. And so that's what Christmas is all about. I love you guys heaps. Bye.
joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven, heaven, nature sing. We will sing, sing, sing. Joy to the world, we will sing, sing, sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let man the songs employ. White fields and floods, rock hills and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. We will sing, sing, sing. Joy to the world, we will sing, sing, sing. Joy to the world, we will sing, sing, sing. And He rules the world. Truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of His righteousness, and wonders of His love, and wonders of His love, and wonders of His love. Sing, sing, sing. Joy to the world. We will sing, sing, sing. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let us. Receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven, heaven, nature sing.
Isaiah chapter 9, starting in verse 1. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honour Galilee of the nations by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with righteous with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. You know, I've been pondering um, this particular scripture leading into Christmas. I've been thinking about what it meant both then and what it means now. These must have been such words of hope to Israel, a promise of coming light, of an enlarged nation, of an increase of joy. What hope must have filled their hearts as they heard these words? No longer the yoke that burdens them, no more a bar across their shoulders. No more need for warriors' boots and garments, for a child is to be born and he will establish righteousness and justice. You know, this prophecy must, must have really held them during difficult times. And yet, of course, we know that so many of them missed it because it didn't look like they thought it should. You know, we've been speaking about lives transformed in Scripture over these last few months. You know, the lives of people who encountered Jesus. And then we've also, at the same time, been hear, hearing stories from our own people in this building about the way that encountering Jesus has transformed their lives. 
You know, Jesus is the one who brings the transformation, both the one that's spoken of in Scripture, but also the ones that we hear of in our own church family. So what about us? You know, as I listened to this read recently, my heart also leapt. The coming of a great light, a light that dawns on those living in darkness. How amazing that God should choose a baby to bring this light, a baby born in a simple place to ordinary people. And with his coming, our lives are enlarged. Our joy is increased. Our burdens are lifted. The bar is also off our shoulders. You know, this is like truly a moment of rejoicing. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. You know, we use the word awe pretty lightly these days. But seriously, if this, if reading this and thinking about this doesn't leave you in awe of our God and his goodness and his grace and his mercy, then it's only because like me, you don't fully comprehend it yet. You know, I've always thought about the fact that Scripture says there was nothing physically about Jesus to draw our attention to him. He was born in really simple circumstances to really ordinary people. He told stories about ordinary, everyday things to teach great truth. He spent time with everyday people. When he performed signs and miracles, it wasn't to draw attention to himself, but to bring glory to the Father to bless those who receive these signs and miracles and to show us his kingdom, his upside down kingdom of which his birth is a true representation, a birth in a manger surrounded by animals and shepherds and a few fancy people to bring the light of the world. I was reading something recently that I'd like to share with you. It's from a book called Simply Tuesday. What if instead of thinking that we have to choose between our ordinary life and an extraordinary life, we began to realise that they're the same thing? What if we stopped asking God for big ways to serve him and started walking with our friend Jesus into the next simple moment in front of us? I have a vision of a generation of believers who understand that the goal of life is Jesus and all the ways he wants to offer himself both to us and through us to the world. I have a vision of people who make the invisible kingdom visible, sinking low to the ground, picking up their crosses, eating the bread of life and serving it up with Vegemite. The original author did say peanut butter and jelly, but hey, that doesn't work in our context. Definitely Vegemite. You know, sometimes we think that our lives, they need to be grand and extraordinary and seen by lots of people in order that we would well represent the light that is within us, in order to represent the kingdom and all that it represents. The truth is that God actually takes the ordinary and he makes it extraordinary that any time we do what we're called to, no matter how small, no matter how big, it actually holds great significance in the kingdom. If Jesus is truly our goal, if we see that what he offers us is so much and that he wants to work through us, then we'll be willing to do the most lowly of tasks for him. We will be overwhelmed by the blessing of an ordinary life that touches other ordinary lives with the truth and the love of Jesus. So today... Let us celebrate the coming of the King as a babe. Let us celebrate the light of the world that has come down into darkness and give thanks that he should choose to dwell with us and in us. Let's pray. Father God, we just, we thank you so much for today and everything it represents for us. We thank you that you would come, that you would dwell with us. And now that you would dwell within us. We thank you for the gift that you have given us of ordinary lives made extraordinary by your very presence. We just ask that each of us would know your nearness and your goodness today. In Jesus' name, amen.